What's up, guys? I'm Solis Williams, aka the Swole Fester, here to educate you on health and social well being. Today, guys, we're going to be talking about arms, specifically what type of strength standards you should have on specific movements if you're actually trying to grow your arms, why some of you may not be seeing the type of growth that you think you should be seeing in your arms, as far as like what your expectations are, genetic potential, as well as explaining the right way to go about incorporating accessory movements, if any, when it comes to your overall arm training. And the reason I want to do this, guys, is because, like, you guys know, this channel, I, I want to cover everything, health, fitness, social well-being. And I know that lately, like the past few months where they have been, a lot of it's been focused on powerlifting. So I'm trying to like, you know, have a nice healthy balance, give you some guys talks about hypertrophy. And I believe a nice curve of arms is something that, you know, pretty much everybody wants. Some people don't necessarily care about getting their chest bigger. Some people maybe not don't want the widest back for whatever crazy reason. But I think, you know, a nice pair of guns that we can open carry is something that we all can appreciate. So I want to kind of get right into that. Now, the first thing, guys, reason number one why a lot of you aren't seeing the type of growth in your arms that you want is because you simply have not put in the time and work on the right movements. I have so many of you guys, both in the YouTube comments, even on older videos to this day, will comment on older videos or slide into my DMs on Instagram talking about how you go, you know, hey man, I'm doing all this arm volume, I have like two arm days a week, I'm doing eight different types of curls, six different types of tricep isolation movements, and I'm just not seeing the type of growth I want in my arms. And the reason is, guys, because once again, as those of you who've been with this channel long enough, know where I'm going with this, those of you who are new, are about to find out really quick, the key to muscle growth, guys, is going to be those compound movements, those multi-joint exercises. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with um, uh, single joint movements, like isolation movements, like curls and stuff like that, but that's kind of like the cherry on top. Your bread and butter is going to be your big compound movements. When we're talking about the arms specifically, your compound push and pull movements. Your push movements, yes, those are gonna grow your chest. They're gonna grow your shoulders. Your pull movements are gonna work your lats and your upper back, but they're also putting an extreme amount of workload on your arms. I'm sorry. You're never gonna be able to get quite as much workload on the bicep doing a dumbbell curl is what you're gonna get doing a weighted chin up or doing a pin lay row. You're never gonna be able to load up a tricep, um, like a tricep press down machine with the same amount of workload that you're gonna be able to load up with like a bench press or an overhead press. And the problem is so many of you, you put way more emphasis on the single joint movements or just trying to just blast your arms with a bunch of volume instead of actually trying to get stronger on your big compound movements. And mind you, when I say getting stronger, I'm not talking about like more rep max necessarily. I'm talking about are you doing more sets, more reps, more weight on these movements as a whole through a proper full range of motion as you go. And that's another thing. A lot of you like you're doing these movements, but you're doing them incorrectly and wondering why you're not getting a lot of benefit of it. Like, oh, the bench press doesn't really work. You know, I, I forget the triceps. I've heard people say the bench press doesn't work for my chest, but you're doing like crazy extreme wide grip, mega arch touch and go reps. And what's not a long range of motion, you're not doing a whole lot of workload on the muscle groups involved. So what I want to do, I'm going to have pop up on screen as I discuss this, guys, showing you examples. Because yesterday I took time out of my day after I did my bench press work to show you example clips of each movement that we're pretty much going to be discussing here in terms of certain strength standards that you should have and how if you reach these standards, I don't care who you are, what your genetics are like, you're going to see um, growth in your arms regardless. So on screen, you guys are gonna see right now um, that I'm doing the bench press. Now here's the thing, guys, for like my beginners out there, where it's like you're complaining that you feel like your arms aren't growing, you've been training for a little bit. Well, if you're a beginner, I'm assuming you probably don't even have any, even like a full year of training under your belt yet. But if you're over here just maxing out at like, you know, 200 is your max, I'm sorry, for each thing that I'm giving you guys, the rep range you're gonna be working with is like, you need to be able to hit these for at least sets of five or more. So for bench press, for my beginners, work towards where you can bench 225 pounds for five reps or more. If you go from whatever you're benching now to where you can bench, you know, 225 pounds for reps, you're gonna see significant growth in your triceps. For those of you where you're already at that point, your next goal should be try to get to where you can bench 275 pounds for five reps or more. And then after that, for those of you guys who are getting more advanced, go for 300 pounds or more. But the reality is those of you who are in between that 225 to 275 pound rep range, all, at this point, we already know that, yeah, if I keep getting stronger, you know, on my bench press, my triceps are gonna grow. Now, for those of you where maybe you don't like to do the flat bench, maybe you wanna focus on the incline bench, we have some ranges for that as well. 185 pounds, for those of you who are beginners, try to get to where you can bench 185 pounds on the incline for five reps. After that, make your goal be 225 pounds. And then after that, make your goal 250 pounds. Like, and you guys notice that with like, no matter how strong you get on these, the reality is the key is still going to be 
to keep getting stronger. These movements that are your bread and butter movements, that doesn't change. Like, they're your base for a reason. It's like you don't build your house on a base and then at any point get rid of the base because the whole thing topples over. It doesn't mean that you can't incorporate more accessory work, but that's gonna be the key to getting stronger in these movements. For your overhead press, um, get to the point where you can do 135 pounds for at least five reps. You guys are seeing me doing that on the screen right now. And mind you, like all these moves I'm about to go over, like the overhead press, the weighted dips, the weight chest, the pin rows, these are moves that I haven't touched in months because they're not a part of my piloting program right now. And yet I'm still able to come in and at least hit these minimums. But for overhead press, 135 pounds for at least five reps should be your first goal. After that, get to where you can rep 185 pounds for five reps. And then after that, for those of you who are really trying to get advanced with it, see if you can rep 200 pounds for five reps or more. Um, for weighted dips, guys, you want to be able to get to the point where you can rep at least two 45 pound plates. So 90 pounds for five reps or more. After that, go for three plates. That's 135 pounds. Then after that, when you're trying to get more advanced, see if you can rep 180 pounds for five reps or more. For the weighted chin ups, some of you still struggle with just body weight chin ups and pulls. And yet you're complaining about my biceps don't seem to grow. You can't even do three or five body weight um, pull-ups or chin-ups yet. Get to the point where not only can you bust out body weight reps on your pull-ups and chin-ups with ease, but get to the point where you can do them weighted. Make your first goal be to, to be able to do five reps or more with 45 pounds. After that, five reps or more with 90 pounds. And then when you want to get more advanced, shoot for 125 pounds or more for, for five reps plus. For the pin lay row, get to the point where you can pin lay row 185 pounds for five reps. Then 225 pounds for five reps, then 275 pounds for five reps and anything beyond that. If you guys actually take the time to get stronger on these movements, I, it's impossible for you to not see arm growth. You got, like I said, a lot of you just think of these as like chest and back movements, but your arms are working. Every time you're doing a pulling motion, your bicep is working. Every time you're doing a pressing motion, your tricep is working. Get stronger on those horizontal presses are gonna develop the tricep, especially the lateral and medial head. If you're getting strong in your overhead press, that's gonna develop the long head a lot more too. Now mind you, you can't, I mean really you can't even isolate a muscle group. That's why it's like the technical term is single joint movement, not isolation movement. But the point is you can't, you, de you can't even really isolate a single muscle and you definitely can't isolate the heads of the muscle. But the point is when we're doing more like overhead work, like you know overhead pressing, that's gonna give the long head more stimulation. And that's what really makes the tricep look big from behind. But yeah, you guys are out here doing all these different types of curls, all these different types of tricep tricep press downs, but you haven't even put in the time and work to get stronger on these movements. And if you do that, you're going to see significant arm growth regardless of where you're at. Like I said, you guys saw, I hit those bare minimums. I'm 165 pounds and my arms are just like 16 um, with no pump and probably closer to like, you know, maybe 16 and a half with the pump. I haven't measured the pump in a while, but the point is that's pretty good for someone like, you know, my, my height, my weight. And I'm not, I'm somebody where I'm quote unquote more torso dominant, right? Which is what I want to be kind of going into next with reason number two as to why a lot of you aren't seeing the arm growth that you want is because you have unrealistic expectations of what your arm growth should look like. Like I said, I'm five foot seven, 165 pounds. It is absolutely ridiculous for me to think that I'm going to have the same arm size as like my boy Russell, right? Who's like, Maybe he's like five six. He's like five inch shorter than me, but he weighs thirty more pounds than me. He walks around like hundred and ninety pounds. It would be ridiculous to think that I'm going to have the same arm size as my boy Derek, who's literally two hundred and forty pounds. Whereas somebody like my boy Michael, who you guys just saw compete in my last YouTube video, we're both around the same height. We're both in like the same weight class, and we have kind of similar structures and frames. So it makes sense that we can have like to expect to have more similar arm sizes. But even then, different things come into account, such as like, you know, how your muscles insert. Like the way your muscles insert is going to determine what your muscles look like. And then and, and just in general, there's different growth potentials um, for each muscle group. And I actually have a video over that link in the description down below where I pretty much talk about like, you know, muscle growth potential and lagging muscle groups. Look, even if you don't train anything but your arms, that doesn't mean all your potential muscle growth for your body just goes to your arms. Your arms have a set limit of how much they can grow. And the reality is some of you, you may not have the genetic potential to have 18, 20 inch arms. Some of you unfortunately may not even have the potential to get to 16 inch arms. But the point is, the basic rules of what everybody has to use to maximize whatever the genetic potential is in their arms or any of their muscle groups 
is the same. That's adequate workload on the muscle groups and gradually progressively overloading with that workload. That's what's gonna be the best for you. So that's what you guys have to keep in mind too. A lot of you, it's not that your arms aren't growing, but you have unrealistic expectations of how your arms grow. Or maybe you're like me, where like, you know, like my chest and back, I'm more torso dominant. I can see growth in those areas a lot quicker than what I can in my arms. Whereas for other people, it's the opposite. But I understand that it's not so much that my arms are lagging muscle group, it's just, even if I'm doing everything right as far as workload, my chest is still gonna grow faster than my triceps, my back is still gonna grow faster than my biceps. That's just how it is. And it's also understanding that with the way I'm currently training, I'm doing movements that are gonna put more emphasis on growing my chest and my back more so than my arms. Yet, regardless, I've still been able to maintain my arm size, as you guys saw a couple of videos when I did my um, my updated measurements and showing you my physique, that I've still been able to maintain my arms even though I'm not doing as much workload on some of these movements I'm talking to you guys about right now because building the muscle is a lot harder than maintaining it. With maintaining it, I've been able to maintain my arms with like, you know, um, like just bench press, lat pull downs, um, my cable rows and like, you know, the occasional curls that I do every now and then, not doing near as much like of like the single joint movements or um, even like, you know, the weighted pull-ups, the dips, the overhead press, like seven of those, months months, months, or near as much of that. But that's the reason number two why a lot of you guys aren't seeing the arm growth you want is because what you want isn't realistic. So you have to keep that in mind too. And also understand diminished returns. I'll have a video um, in the description box for that as well, where I pretty much tell you guys like kind of like what, how much muscle you can expect to build based upon like your, your genetic potential kind of from the start and what you can expect to build with each year after that, assuming you're following proper training protocols. Because the reality is, the longer you do this, the harder it is to not only build strength, but to put on muscle mass due to diminished returns. So those of you who think that, you know, oh, you're gonna see these drastic differences, the same way you did from your year one uplifting, it's just not gonna happen that way. The differences get more gradual to where it takes years and years to see more differences. That's just the way it works. And then reason number three, guys, that a lot of you aren't seeing the arm growth that you want is simply due to the fact that even when you do do accessory work, you don't even go about it like in the best way possible. Like if there were two single joint movements that I would suggest you guys do if you're really trying to maximize your arm growth, the first one is going to be um, barbell curls, which I'll have a video a clip of that on screen from yesterday as well. And the reason I suggest doing that is because out of every bicep movement there is, um, you know, that's a single joint movement anyway, there's no movement you're gonna be able to overload the way that you can the barbell curl. You're never gonna be able to do quite as much with a dumbbell curl or a cable machine or anything like that as what you can with the barbell curls. And I told you guys before, for me, um, when I was younger, like when I, when I first started training, I was doing like full body with a heavy emphasis on just like higher frequency, compound movements, the only isolation movement I was doing was barber curls. And it wasn't even because I was thinking, oh, I definitely get at least one isolation movement in. I wasn't even thinking in terms of compounds isolation, it was just the fact that, oh, that's what you do when you lift weights, right? You do curls. But I treated my curls like a compound movement in the sense of I wasn't just going in there doing like extremely high reps of 15, 20, not that the rep range in itself matters, you guys know that's total workload, sets, times reps, times weight. But the fact that I was focused on just getting stronger on it. If I was doing sets of five on Monday for curls, and that's okay. If I was doing sets of 10 on Fridays for curls, that's okay. But the point is, when I was doing sets of fives to 10, I was gradually trying to make sure that I was adding weight to that bar. I was making sure that my sets of fives were going up weekly. Make sure that my sets of 10s were going up weekly. And because the potential for how you can overload a barbell curl compared to other curls is just like night and day. So that's the first one. And then the second one is which is gonna be for the triceps is gonna be tricep overhead extension. Once again, guys, the long head doesn't get quite as much, you know, engagement or love when you're doing a lot of your horizontal presses. It gets some good um, engagement with your vertical presses, like, you know, overhead press, um, if you're doing that standing or standing dumbbell shoulder press. But the reality is a lot of you may be like me, where you just have a heavier emphasis on your bench, or maybe um, you just prefer to do more horizontal pressing than vertical pressing. Not that I think you should throw out vertical pressing all together, but for that reason, you just might be doing more overall horizontal pressing than vertical pressing, therefore the long is not getting quite as much love. So tricep over ex extensions are a great movement because they actually are going to give your long head more engagement. To me, it doesn't make sense to go, in, from the standpoint of hypertrophy, like I said, what accessory movements you do and what single movements you do, they have a place, but it's always about knowing the why. If we're talking purely from a hypertrophy perspective, please believe that I'm going to prioritize overhead extensions before I prioritize just your normal press downs. Because if I'm already doing what I'm supposed to be doing as far as my bench, incline bench press, weighted dips, well then my lateral and medial head are gonna get plenty of work. There's no need to just go immediately go and do a bunch of extra tricep press downs. I'm gonna go with the overhead extension and show the head that gets the least amount of love on my compound movements more love. But those are the only two single joint moments that I can say like across the board, if you guys are gonna isolate your arms, you should probably be doing. Now, with all this being said, that's not to say there's anything wrong with like 
having an arm day. Like if you just want to have an arm day, there's nothing wrong with doing other movements. You guys have seen me do like rope cable curls, uh, dumbbell curls, tricep press downs. You guys have seen me do a lot of that, but a lot of that is kind of just like, I'll do it for like mild rep work, just like get a nice little fun pump at the end, kind of finish the muscle off, or it's stuff that I'll do if I'm just hanging out with my bros and we just want to have a, like a fun little arm workout or whatever, but they aren't ever like staples of my programming. And the reason being is there's just not a need. If you're following like, the, the strength standards getting stronger on those movements, your arms are gonna grow. And like I said, if you're gonna do any single joint movements, the barber curl and tricep overhead extension really are plenty. And it's just getting stronger on those movements and doing enough workload over them. There's no need to have two, three arm days a week. There's no need to be doing a hundred different variations of curls and press downs if you have not covered your basics first. And that's the biggest thing, guys. A lot of you, you, you look for some special movements, some special secrets, some special supplement, when it really does come down to simply getting stronger on these movements. If you guys do that, I guarantee you, you're gonna see some significant arm growth, no matter who you are across the board. And then just being realistic with what what with what with genetics you have. Like if you're somewhere where you have like extremely long arms and crappy insertions, then even if you get your arms bigger, they may never look the way you want, but it's all about taking whatever hand you're dealt with and making the most of it. And that's when we're talking about building muscle or anything else in life, but yeah. That's it for the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you did. If you're not, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can do better. Like the video, share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later.